Good morning. How's everything up in the sky? Uh, we had a couple of different topics. Uh, I don't remember any oh, of them. One of which is you, well, we were talking over breakfast. And, as we do. Uh, as we do. Uh, well, we talk. And uh, you wanted to apologize, and you wanted to explain how you felt that maybe uh, lately yeah. we have been a little bit harsh uh, on people like Boeing, on people like NASA. Yeah. Um, you know, sort of the, it's not an old space versus new space situation, although sometimes it very much can feel like that for a lot of different reasons. Like, uh, anyone who is classically considered to be old space versus anyone who is now considered to be new space, they do have different viewpoints on how to get potentially the same um, the same object done, right? The same challenge, how to approach the same challenge, how to, you know, and there's different approaches. And there's there should be different approaches. There's allowed for different approaches. And if we all did the exact same thing at the exact same time, then, a, it's not really challenging. It's also really not very interesting. Um, I think some of the interest comes from different companies having different viewpoints on how to attack the same kind of challenge. And also, all ships rise with the tide. So I don't want, I don't even want the two of us to approach our like AMA the same way, mm -hmm. right? So NASA having one approach of, we'll say, for instance, getting to the moon and staying there, right? Um, you know, yes, we need an SLS love in. I don't know that we need that. Um, yes, absolutely. <laughs> but that's, that's the point. Look, that's, so we've been really hard we on have NASA been. and Boeing and all of the old space companies. And I am, I'm fairly against tribal politics and like picking sides on these things. Yes. Because I think everything's far more complicated than that. And it's not that your yes. side, because then your side has to win and their side has to lose. Right. But in the case of humans living and working in space, why does... SLS have to lose. Now, that doesn't, that doesn't mean that there aren't problems with the program, sure. but we could point to any program and find yeah. problems with any program. Yes, right? absolutely. So, I, so my resolution for 2020, my personal resolution for 2020 has been to be a little kinder to NASA, a little kinder <laughs> to the Space Launch System and, and to all of the contractors, including Boeing, mm -hmm. uh, who are working on these things because we do know those engineers that are working on these things. Yeah, we have friends. Well, I mean, not in, all of them, but I mean, yeah, yeah. Every single one of them. Every uh, engineer. We, yeah, we have friends in, in nearly every single company. Uh, we've been in the business a long time. We've been in this sort of space area for a while, and you meet people, and you mingle with people, and you get to know people, and you get to enjoy who they are. And I'm not trying to insult any work that anyone is doing at any company. Um, you know, yeah, it's all for, ultimately, it's all for the betterment, like I said, of tomorrow. And I think that's, uh, I, I think that's really worthy. I think human person put it really well. Also, I love that username. Yeah, I love amazing. how Jim Bridenstine said that having dissimilar, redundant, redundant approaches is the way to go. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and he's not wrong. Yep. And yeah, I can point to things that I don't like about the space launch system, but in the end, mm -hmm. what matters is humans living and working in space. Yep. And why am I creating tribal barriers? Why am I creating yep. an us versus them mentality? Yep. I am absolutely personally guilty of doing this. Mm -hmm. Why am I doing this? Yeah. Because ultimately what I want is I want li humans living and working in space. If that's what NASA wants to, Shouldn't I be supporting them? Yep. Shouldn't I be supporting them? Even if I disagree with how they're getting there? Right. Like, I'm allowed to disagree, but, like, in a positive, constructive way. And I don't believe that I have been doing right. that. Right. Uh, so that's, I, I think that was kind of one of the first topics I want. I wanted to bring up was, A, to apologize to NASA and Boeing and... It is a little bit of an community. unconscious bias kind of situation. I think yeah. you just need to be aware of uh, the way that we're speaking about other companies. Um, or all companies, I suppose, and and yeah, breaking down those those barriers. Yeah, that's it, all. I and I would encourage. It's so easy. I'll be frank. It's easy to hate on Space Launch System. It really is, especially when you look at like what some of the new space companies are doing, mm -hmm. the amount of time and money that's sunk into the Space Launch mm -hmm. System. Except that there's real hardware here. Yes. Right. There's real hardware in a test stand. They're getting ready for the green green run. Getting ready for the yeah. Getting ready for the green run test. Um, like, they're, they have 
a large part, of, not a complete rocket, but a large part of a very powerful, very amazing rocket. Um, <laughs> uh, Tom asks, does Boeing and NASA work nights and weekends like SpaceX? But you know, it's different approaches. It, and, I, what's, and what's wrong with that? If the answer to this is yes or no, as long as, they're putting, as long as NASA and Boeing are putting humans in space, does them working nights and weekends matter? Or one could argue, if they're not working nights and weekends and get humans living and working in space, maybe they are they doing it better than the people who have to Right, work, work smarter, not harder. I, again, it's just, it's completely different approaches, right? Yep. And, and that's the way it should be. That's, there's nothing wrong with any of that in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I can't say that username. Rabindra Mishra? <laughs> Here's an old school space vidcast thing where I struggle with username. Yes, apologize. Uh, it's not about old space versus new space. It's about doing space flight more efficiently yep. and reliably. Also, push boundaries in rocket tech and accept risks. Yep. Yes. Actually, I, I would, I would, I would say that this goes back to you need different groups to do different things. Mm -hmm. You do need a group that is risk averse, like. There is a place for that in industry. It's not as exciting as the groups that want to take the risk. Sure. Because the risk is exciting, right? Well, I think that's why a lot of times uh, there's a whole lot of um, Blue Origin versus SpaceX, for instance, mm -hmm. right? Blue Origin, in their symbol, in their icon, in their, what is the badge? What am I trying to say? Either way, they have two tortoises. Their coat of arms. Thank you, their coat of arms. They have two tortoises, and they are often criticized we have even off criticized them that they are doing something. They're doing things. Mm -hmm. Just we don't always know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. They are taking their time. They're being extremely methodical. They are making sure they're not just double checking, they're triple checking. They're probably even quadruple checking. Yeah. And making sure that every single decision that they make is the decision that they really want to do, is really the decision, the area that they want to go in all the way down to the minute detail. And that can sometimes, when you are a fan, feel very risk adverse and feel boring and feel annoying and feel like they're not doing anything, even though they are, they very, they very much so are. But that's how it feels when you're on the outside, that's how that feels. And then you see other companies who you know, are making big explosions, sometimes on purpose and sometimes not, right? Like Firefly just had uh, a little bit of an issue. They're going to recover. It's going to be fine. But, you know, they were doing a test and then some fire shot out the freaking side. Like, but it's so because we're seeing those things, it feels like they're moving along. It feels like they're less risk adverse. It feels like they're taking more chances. It feels like they're going a little bit faster. And Neither one of those things is correct or better than the other in any way, shape, or form. They're just different approaches. Absolutely. So uh, my commitment to you, the community, and to you, humanity, is to work that out of my system through the rest of 2020. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to pretend like I'm not going to screw that up because it's super easy to screw up and it's mm -hmm. super easy to take sides. It's super easy to become tribal on these things. Absolutely. Old space versus new space. Absolutely. Company X versus company Y. It's super easy to do these things yeah. and much, much harder to take a step back and look at the big picture. The whole picture. The whole picture and go, okay, how does this impact us as a species? Yep. And uh, my commitment to you is I will, as best I can, and continue working forward, I'm going to be taking a step back and go, okay, actually, how does this impact the big picture? Is this going to help humanity live and work in space? And, and I think the answer to space launch system is yes. Yes, it will help humanity live and work in space. I may not agree with some of the stuff that's going on there, sure. but you know what? They're, they're doing it. They're making forward progress. That's good. Yeah, and the, the other thing to note is that it's not how you fail or why you fail necessarily in, in so much as more how you recover from that failure. Uh, JTTV says, she works for SpaceX. This must be a hard topic for her. No, this is very simple. Uh, and I would argue... Because it goes for anything and everything. Th this is very simple for me. I believe that humanity... Sh should be working, living and working amongst the stars. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that any, this is my own personal opinion, mm -hmm. not that of anything, of any companies that I work for or contract for anything. Um, 
I, I just think that any pathway for humanity to be better is a good pathway. It's a very simple topic. There isn't, there's like, it's truly that simple. Oh, this is a good, uh, what, what did you push? I'll push the next one. Okay. Uh, Gissick says, let's not forget that setting very lofty goals in the name of space exploration has always curated technology for the betterment of society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Duh. And see, again, back to like, but not everyone has to do that. Some of these groups can be cautious with their approach. Some of them can be less cautious, and you can have groups in between. Yeah, but see, either All way, of them are either, yeah, there. yeah, exactly. Either way, you're still going to get the betterment of society. I hadn't planned on talking about this, mm. but um, Dan asks: Moon first or Mars first? Moon, they, they, uh, moon again versus Mars yeah, first. Got moon it. Got again, it. Yeah, yeah. Some exactly. of you are a little young. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yep. exactly. I never got to see it. I wasn't alive. So for me, it's moon first versus Mars yeah. first. Uh, what's your opinion? Moon or Mars first? Where should we send humans? Because you've uh, got to pick. Like, usually our, an our default answer is pick both. both but real realistically, you, you're realistically, going to pick one. I, I'm going to say moon. I, I just am. And uh, um, I apologize. A lot of you have already heard this argument before. You're going to hear it again. Um, there is something to be said. We live in California. All of our family is in Minnesota. Uh, not all of it, but the majority of our family, our, our, uh, our parents, our brothers, our sisters-in-law, like all of them are in Minnesota. And there's no single peak in California or up the coast and, you know, go to Mount Rainier. I can't go to the highest point that I can reach and see Minnesota unless I go to Minnesota. I can't be in California and see my family in Minnesota. I can video call them, blah, blah, blah. Fine. However, if for whatever reason, either I was living on the moon or my parents were living on the moon, and one of us was down here on Earth, you could go out effectively nearly every single day or night and look up and see that other body. I can go out at night, see the moon, know that my parents are there, talk to them if I want, but there is a connection there that I don't have with Mars, that I don't get with Mars, at least not very often, that I could have nearly every single night with the moon and with my family. And I think that's really, really powerful. I think that's one of the reasons that the picture of Earth from the moon, that very first time that we got that, Earthrise. was so amazing. A lot of other reasons as well. However, I think that, that was like, just this teeny tiny little thing encapsulates literally every single other person you've ever met in your entire life. Like that's crazy. That's well, crazy. Yes, that's, and that's such a connection that I just simply don't have. So you say, you're saying moon first because there's an amazing emotional connection to humanity itself that exists there that doesn't quite exist on Mars. Yeah, do you, at least not yet. Do you, okay, not yet. So do you think that that connection will be created when we first start sending humans to Mars? No, I think it'll be generationally created after a while. I don't think it will be immediate. Hmm. So you think it'll take a hot minute for us to like, Go, oh wow. Because, like, look, I'm trying to imagine my head right now. By the way, in the chat room, um, Moon or Mars first, I know a lot of you did that, but also in the on demand comments, Moon or Mars first, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, Moon again, Mars first. Right. Um, and why? Mm -hmm. and why? I'd mm -hmm. love to know. Mm -hmm. um, but if, imagine for a moment, thought exercise, mm -hmm. we had humans on their way to Mars right now that are one month into their Martian journey. Sure. What kind of impact would that have on the, we'll call it the consciousness of humanity as a whole, if any? And would that impact be as strong as we're watching humans go to the moon in their one day into their journey into the moon? So they're not there yet, right. but you're like, you look up to the night sky and you go, uh, you go, Starlink. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. That's amazing. <laughs> I hope we don't get in trouble for that. Um, you, <laughs> it popped in my head. It made me laugh. <laughs> um, it's one of our topics later anyway. Go on. Um, <laughs> Uh, then you go, oh, moon. Uh, <laughs> now uh, I can see the moon. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> there it is. Finally. Um, right. The, uh, do you, like, because it's so much larger, because it's easier to see. Right. Do you, do you, do you think that connection is just stronger? Um, I, I don't know. I, there's something. <sighs> I think there will be a similar feeling if and or when you have humans living on Mars and you have 
humans living on one of Mars's moons. There's something about staying in your own neighborhood. Mm. Does that kind of make sense? Yeah. Not that Mars is outside of our, when you want to look at like the whole city, uh, you know, Mars is still there, but like there's just something, there just is, there's just something different about seeing something with your naked eye, going outside, mm. seeing the moon. Even children can go, yep, moon, right? You can't always identify Mars with the naked eye. I think Brendan brings up a really, Brendan Luke brings up a really great point in the chat room, which mm. is the time frame of a moon journey might keep it in the public consciousness better than months to Mars. Because a Mars mission, that's what, six to nine months? Right. Depending, depending on many factors, but right. six to nine months of a journey just to get there. So you've got the launch itself, that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. And then like 69 months of like pretty boring, mm -hmm. right? Not a whole lot going on. Mm -hmm. And then what is it, nine minutes of terror? Yeah. Right, your entry, descent, landing, your EDL. And, and then like, another year before they can return. Sure. So, although once you're on an alien surface, like, imagine if this was happening on Mars, that'd be kind of cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, <laughs> the chat room would be slightly delayed. <laughs> slightly. Good gods, it'd be terrible, but yes. Yeah, no, I, I don't know. Actually, Leland, and, and I think this is an important point. Leland Rogers says, I'm 75 and I hope to see people on both bodies before it's my time. Yep. A and I think it's key to understand we're not saying moon or Mars. It's obviously moon and Mars, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just like, which one do we go to first? Because mm -hmm. we've been to the moon. Mm -hmm. So we've already done that. Uh, like from well, an engineering no, standpoint, we've, we've done, done that, that. We've sure. There. We also like, haven't. Cool. What's the next big challenge for you? Uh, they're both challenges. They're both different kinds of challenges, mm -hmm. right? There's all, always the argument of you get there and you learn things and that's going to help you get to Mars better and all of that fun stuff. There's totally that. The thing is that we need to have a settlement on both. We, we just need to. Mm -hmm. Like, that's, sure. that's a given. So whether, whichever one you do first or, again, I don't know. I, 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 it's, it's almost moot, really. Like, just do the thing. Just do the thing. Your front has a moderately interesting question. Yeah. Which is how will exploring other not Earths, mm -hmm. so Moon, Mars, anything sure, that's not Earth, sure. you know, non-habitable planets, we'll call it, help save life on Earth from the coming solar catastrophe slash events? I, I think, like, I think the problem with this question is, is from the cr coming catastrophes. I, yeah. I don't think we should specify solar, sure. right? Because um, when the sun goes. When, the, when our sun goes, it's taking Mars and Earth and our moon with it. Mm -hmm. That's a ways away. The thing is, like, you need to learn to crawl before you can walk. Right. right? So we're not going to just go from Earth to some other solar system. we got to get to the moon first. Right. And we got to get to Mars. And then the Mar... Mar the Mars. Mars is not our final destination. Mars no, of course not. Mars is just the next step in our journey, which yes. will hopefully... Continue from there. Like, we shouldn't stop like we did after Apollo. We okay. should keep going. This is my point. We've been there, sure. But we need to practice coloniz colonizing, not just landing and leaving. Yeah, 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 I agree. Uh, thank so, you, R. So, yeah, going R. going back, it's saying, like, oh, we've already been there. Again, we visited. We effectively have played tag with the tree outside of our neighbor, outside of our house, but we've never climbed that tree. We haven't made a tree house in that tree. We haven't then eventually had to cut down the tree and and make it into a, a table. Like we've done, we've barely done anything with this tree. We went up to the tree, we touched a tree, we acknowledged that it was a tree. You can tell by the way that it is, and then we walked back inside, and that's what we did. Mm. We haven't done anything else with this tree. So moon, you're definitely moon first. I am. I moon first, um, mostly for the emotional connection with humanity. I it's think because I've convinced her. That's why. Go you on. Did. No, you I did. I know. I, I did. used to be. A, I used to be hardcore Mars first. I know. I did. Go on. Well, because uh, that's fine. The the argument for Mars first. Yes. That I had yes. was yeah. We've already been to the moon. We've all like, we need to do the next engineering challenge. We need right. to reach out to the next place. Right. Also, we're not terraforming the moon. No. We can create habitation on the moon, sure. but we're not terraforming the moon. So there is a possibility mm -hmm. of terraforming Mars. There's also a little bit more gravity on Mars, so it might be <laughs> a little bit easier. Just easier on our species to live there and um, don't cut down the moon. Well, which is funny because then doing homework says no, cut down the moon. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Thanks, chat room. Yeah, I know. Analogies. I know. I'm sorry. This <laughs> is. You're welcome. You want to be back. This is what you're getting now. <laughs> Yes, I do obviously want a treehouse. I had, oh, I kind of had a treehouse. Oh, my goodness, how much for a moonhogany desk? 
That's like the only pun I've ever liked in my life. No, that's pretty good. Okay, go on. Uh, there were a couple other, like, um, uh, John uh, Benstead says, think, just think of how much we've learned about the effects of space on the human body with the International mm -hmm. Space Station. Then, think if we had rushed off to Mars in the 70s without that knowledge. Yeah. It could I have mean, been disaster. Assume, it could have been, but like, <laughs> could we have totally disaster. could have learned, like, we made it, we rushed to the moon. Yes. So, I mean. Yeah. I actually think if we had done this, we'd be a lot further along than we are today. It, it would be way riskier, to be fair. It would be uh, really, really different. There would have been a lot more people who would, probably would have died. Um, at, you know, wow. This is an interesting thought experiment, too. Right? This might have... this Because, if, yeah, if more people yeah. died, then maybe we would have stopped and we wouldn't have gotten any further. We could have just potentially just killed the program completely. Uh, also, I do... Nope. I do believe in this. Nope, we, that's just not a thing. Daniel McCool, we need more puns for Carrie Ann. She's nope. anti-puns and I'm pro-puns. And I constantly Moon try to be good. funny. And she hates it. I, yeah, I do. Uh, now you know. Yeah, but Moonhogany. It's <laughs> good. I like it. Um, Ooh. Uh, oh, did we do that at the same time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. <sighs> Double lunch. Oh, like um, well, we're both Carrie Ann today, so. <laughs> Are we? The joke is... <laughs> I can't log out of this tablet. It's logged in to, to our chat room that does all of this. Whatever. And it's logged in as Carrie Ann. And so, like, I'm Carrie Ann now. Okay. Are we, as a species, too risk averse? Great. Uh, but human persons, as many people died on the colony ships as well. Yes, they did. But, uh, can but I actually, swear? That goes back to this. Can I swear? Can I swear? Uh, yeah, all right. I mean, that stuff wasn't televised, though. How many yeah. people back home knew how many people died on those ships? No one freaking knew. Only the people on the ships knew. Now, somebody dies. And we don't want them to die, right? Like, let's be, let's be honest. We don't want them to die. The people who are going into these programs, the people who are being these test people, they know that that's a risk. And they're willing to take that risk. We're not trying to kill them. In fact, we're trying to do very much so the opposite. However... Everyone will know. Everyone will know. If the IFA, the in-flight abort uh, uh, flight that SpaceX just did, if that went terribly, everyone would know. I, I, it, no, that's why right. it's different. You're right. Can we spend too much time on this? I feel like we need to move on. Sure, if you like. I mean, we can. It's, it's hard to tell when you're What did the Muna Bomber say? Oh, uh, so uh, Vax, uh, Untied Music Studio, Vax Headroom in the chat room, longtime contributor to this show. Quite. Um, uh, has an amazing episode with us on, um, on uh, Sea Dragon, mm -hmm. which was, uh, uh, I'm not going to give out that spoiler, but if you watch, oh, what is it, on Apple Plus? Not from the Earth. Uh, yeah, for All Mankind. For All Mankind. If you watch For All Mankind, there was a nice little like call out to Sea Dragon, and a, and a, like awesome. I, it made me immediately think of, oh, of Vax. Like, totally. I wa that entire time, all I could picture was Vax. It was yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the whole done that about the moon is what have we done? Mm -hmm. Spent a few days there six times and mm -hmm. explored the equivalent of mm -hmm. a few neighborhoods. We haven't even done any serious geology there. True, but there's also perception of we've we've been there we overcame that technical hurdle what's the next technical hurdle and so we know we can get humans on the moon we've done that so can we get humans to mars we don't know we've not done that that's the next technical hurdle so when i say done that that's what i mean i don't mean we've explored every square inch of the moon obviously we have not in fact we like we were at the terminator we didn't even, we haven't even gone to the poles yeah. Right? Like, obviously, we need to get humans on the poles. Yeah. But, yeah. So, there you go. There you go. All right. Um, how, about, how about cookies in space? Sure. Let's shift gears. Absolutely. Let's shift gears. To be fair, it's not really that big of a shift. No, I agree. It really that, isn't. That's why I like it. I think, um, I think we'll end with cookies in space. Okay. So, you're, you're probably sitting there going, why the hell are we talking going about? Going from moon or Mars <laughs> to cookies in space. You're welcome, this, Internet. This this. I promise it makes sense. So, most recently, the International Space Station was able to bake cookies in space. Uh, <laughs> You're all like, cool. No, no. No, they're not. They are interested. 
<laughs> this, the reason, and I have, for those of you who've been watching uh, Tomorrow and Space Fake Cast for quite a while, you know that I am always the one who has fought for these kind of humanitarian topics, the things that were pretty or cute or neat or interesting and not just nuts and bolts. And the reason that cookies are important mm -hmm. is because A, cookies. Uh, B. I still want a cookie. <laughs> <laughs> like a good, warm, home-baked chocolate chip cookie. And you can have that on the International Space Station. That is exciting. And eventually on Mars. So the things that we're doing right now, do you, I don't know if you guys remember, there was a, a few years back where everyone was super excited that we grew basil out of old, like, diapers on the International oh, yeah, Space that's Station. Right. That's right. That was a huge deal. It and was, gross. It was disgusting. <laughs> I never want to... I'm glad we can do it, okay? I'm glad we can drink our own pee and all that other fun stuff. But I don't want to <laughs> actively <laughs> grow basil out of diapers and then use that as my pesto. It's just not something that I want to do. But most of us have a cookie ever, quite possibly. But the idea that we are now able to do something as simple and basic as baking cookies in space means that those kind of creature comforts, mm -hmm. you know, having... We were talking about having coffee in space. I don't know that I could go to space for an extended amount of time <laughs> without coffee. Like, I legitimately am not sure I could do that. I mean, I don't, I don't want to, but I can uh, because I, I, can't have, I can't have caffeine anymore. But those sort of creature comforts are the things that you're going to want eventually, at least eventually, wherever you are, whether you're on Mars or the moon or the moons of Mars or beyond that, you are going to want those sorts of things that... It's not even just a reminder of home. Mm -hmm. It's about the the sharing and the community and the it's that human touch. It is a creature comfort. That's what it is. That is definitely the theme of this show is like humanity itself. Yes. And like what makes And making it better with cookies. Um, making humanity <laughs> better with cookies. That's what tomorrow really stands for in case you want to know. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I I that is that is super significant though. And it sounds kind of silly and it sounds kind of dumb and it sounds super gimmicky, right? Wasn't it like Double Tree or something? Like Hilton was sure. the, I think it was their cookies because if you ever stayed at Double Tree you get cookies and they're amazing and all that other fun stuff. But there's something about warm cookies that are just so doing the homework says, I'm sure we can make do with caffeine pills. I, I think the point of It's this, not though, about the caffeine though. Yeah, it really is ultimately. It's that's not what it's about. It's about I, I think it's actually a slightly bigger than even just the cookies or mm -hmm. even just food. I like the idea that we're starting to build the things in space that will require like this opens up the idea that, oh, cookies, mm -hmm. well, we're gonna need space chefs. Mm -hmm. Right? We're gonna need people cooking food. And people who even spe specialize in space food. Mm -hmm. Space food! <laughs> right? And, and like what you can cook and how you can create something that has the plate flavor profile you'd want in space because mm -hmm. your taste buds change. Mm -hmm. So it's actually like, it's a lot like, but also very, very different, don't get me wrong. Um, when, for those of you who have ever lived in Colorado, for instance, and you go to the side of the box of baking a cake. And it's, there's a whole other section about high altitude baking. Mm, yes, 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 yes. Like, this is there higher are things, than that altitude baking. Yeah, there are total other things that you have to do. You have to do things longer, you have to do things at a different temperature. You'd, all these things are, are completely different. So it sounds super primitive of like, oh, I baked a cookie. But like, that oven is ridiculous. And it's tiny, which is the other thing. Like, there are so many different things that have to be different in space to make something very really simple and basic like coffee or cookies go. Mechanic on the moon. Yes. Absolutely. And I think for me, when I saw the space cookie story, that is that is what hit me mm -hmm. is that, oh, this isn't really about cookies. This is about all of the jobs that we don't think about yes. that we're about to open up in space. Space right now has been kind of for the select few astronauts. It's the steely-eyed missile men. Right. Um, and, and women. women. Uh, and, and did we do that at the same time? We did. All right. Uh, and, uh, I, no, yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and it's just exciting to me, the idea that we're right on the cusp of not just being able to send more humans up to space than have ever been into space throughout all of history combined mm -hmm. in one year. Mm -hmm. Like, we're, I'm not sure if 2020 will be that. I don't know that this year is that, but we're, we're getting very close to it. The other thing that 
gets me excited is the idea that now we're going to need space mechanics, mm -hmm. lunar mechanics, mm -hmm. Martian mechanics. So I, we're going to need space designers to design the logos for this moon mechanics mm -hmm. and, the, mm -hmm. and everything else. We're going to need chefs in space, mm -hmm. specifically focusing on how to grow food in space, how to do long duration journeys in space, how to make food not suck in space. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's going to be a big one. We need all of the things. Mm -hmm. And I, I personally find that to be exciting. I think that's what brings it space down to humanity and it allows it to touch people that up until now have not understood why they should care about space at all. And well, they that, should care and like, the moment well, it impacts them. Yeah, the thing is, it, it's all about, it's a little bit about representation, right? If you don't see where you can make an impact, you don't see how you can make a contribution, you don't see a space mechanic, you don't see a space chef, Effectively, the astronauts right now are all of these things because they have to be, right? Right. But eventually, we're all going to be astronauts that can also be mechanics. Or not, we're not, no, I guess we're mechanics that are also happen to be astronauts in a weird way, right? We're going to be baristas who also happen to be astronauts because we happen to be living in space. At some point, astronaut is going to be the base level of everything. Yes as opposed to this thing that is, you know, when I was a kid, maybe I wanted to be an astronaut. It'll be, I think it'll be like a qualifier, like it'll be astronaut chef, astronaut mechanic, astronaut something. Yep. You'll, you'll have a specialty that goes after it as opposed to, as you mentioned, astronaut is, you have to know all of the things. You have to know all the things. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be, ultimately, that's the version of space that I'm excited for. Mm -hmm. Actually, I'm a big fan of Jeff Bezos's, Bezai, Bezos's, I don't know how to do that correctly. Sure. Uh, vision of space, of allowing humanity to live and work in cis lunar space, That's mm -hmm. that area of space in between Earth and the moon, mm -hmm. and creating like large thousands of people, like stations and colonies in between these areas, and you're going to need all of the stuff. And again, that's what Space Cookies made me think of. Yep. That and the fact that it's actually my 42nd birthday week and I want cupcakes and cookies on my birthday because I, I haven't been allowed to eat them for a while. So like, also made me think, oh my gosh, I want a cookie for my birthday. Okay. Oh, I was gonna bring a towel. I forgot to bring a towel because it's my 42nd birthday. So I was gonna bring a towel because it was funny. Oh, well, I got-, I got Thankfully we're not in space, we so it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, any other final comments on this topic, or I think we're uh, we're wrapping up here. Yes, uh, I think this is my favorite astronaut pirate. <laughs> I mean, you, you don't want these on Earth either, right? So I feel like <laughs> space pirate is equally as bad. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's excited that I'm turning 42. Yes, yeah. I am turning the ultimate answer to life, universe, and everything, which is uh, exciting. Like I, I'm excited for 42. It's going to be fun. Yep, 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 yep. Or I, <coughs> excuse me, I think, I think that's the, our show this week. I know it was more rough than probably expected. No, it was great. Did you like it? Yeah. yeah. Wait, we've had the show, right? We, we're done now? We're done now. We <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I thought it was fun. Um, I, I hope that everyone here also enjoyed it and also enjoy kind of this new casual conversational format. Again, we're going to tweak it. We'll do better. Um, like just m mentally going back, probably spent a little bit too much time on Moon versus Mars. But let me know your constructive thoughts. Like, what would you like to see us add, remove? Should we have moved the stories along a little bit faster? Did we do an appropriate amount of time on things? Do you like the interactivity of things? I want to I want to add a couple more notes, which is uh, I'm not getting rid of interviews, right? So it'll be a casual interview like this where we're talking with you and we're talking with a guest, but it will no longer be a show of nothing but interviews. So yeah. think of it almost like a round table every week. Well, every month, sorry, we're monthly, not every week. Uh, think of it kind of like a round table, but just with Carrie Ann and myself and you. Uh, so you're the rest of the people in the round table group itself, right? Yeah, that came from me too. Because we were being criticized because we had half a table. Yes, yes. Well, now we have two. We have very two round tables. tables. <laughs> very two, very, yep. Yeah, and actually, uh, Marty the Martian says, uh, t tomorrow, uh, today's tomorrow, huh, indulge in some deep thought. 
Um, that's kind of the point, right? So you're going to get your actual, like, straight up news through our news program that is scripted and well thought out and well researched. Uh, this is going to be not thought out at all. <laughs> very organic, uh, very whatever this was. Maybe we'll <laughs> tighten it up a little bit more, make it a little bit nicer. Nah. That's the thought process. Again, constructive, going back to our roots, mm -hmm. going back to what Space Big Cast was, going back to who we were, going back to a reason to do this show live. Because if we're not interacting with you, why are we doing this live? Yeah. Why, why do any of that? Yep. Um, also, thank you everyone for joining us. Oh, also, final comment, like everyone loved After Dark before, right? Yes. That was like, you're, everyone waited for After Dark, everyone wanted to see After Dark, everyone right. was most excited about it. Right. If you were excited most about the show after the show, <clears> maybe <throat> we should just do that show. Yeah, maybe. Right? So that's, again, some of the thought process here. Like, let's just do that. Uh, oh, my God. More questions. Should we? For, oh, God. Oh, do you want to explain that, or should we just let that go? For oh, that's you? probably okay. All right. Um, I, I'm also debating as to whether we should, Carrie Ann and I should be drinking alcohol on this one. Like, should we have adult beverages and just slowly get? I think it depends. Like, today for us, this is the middle of the day. Yeah. Right, but if it's a Friday so, night, so Friday night. So if we did that, it would be probably Friday night. Yeah, like seven p.m. after a most likely fairly difficult day <laughs> might be a nice way to just unwind with the community, have a drink, talk about some space. My thing has always been this show should be a bunch of friends over a drink, just geeking out. Over, excuse me, geeking out over space. What do you think we do? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Anyhow. Okay, uh, that's our show. Also, thank you, thank you, thank you so much to all of the members of Tomorrow who have helped to make this show possible, as well as our new shows and everything else that we do. You guys keep this station on orbit. You quite literally keep the lights on. Without you, we can't make these shows happen. We can't try interesting new things like this. We can't do AMAs. We can't do, yeah. I have no idea what to call this. Like, none of this happens. And if you'd like to find out how you can help support the shows of tomorrow, head it over to youtube.com slash tmro slash join. There are all new reward levels over there. And if you're like, this show is cool, but I'm not going to give you any money. Understandable. Oh, yeah. By the way, as low as a dollar a month. So like not even a coffee, like a dollar a month, you help the show a great deal. If we had like 10% of the subscribers contribute one dollar per month we would actually we'd be in a really great place but okay if you don't want to contribute any money but you actually do enjoy some of this content certainly uh make sure to uh hit that like button hit that subscribe button and uh hit the notification bell as well so you know when we're doing live shows because our schedule is a little bit wacky right now and so we're not entirely sure when live shows will happen i know that is flustering to the community, and I do apologize. We are trying to work on that and figure that out and trying to really understand how this is going to flow because mm -hmm. Carrie Ann and I doing this is difficult. There's a reason we haven't done it since we... Uh, yeah, but yeah, we'll figure yeah. it out. Like, we're committed to this. We're going to figure this out. So uh, I think that's our first official show of 2020. Yeah. I'd like to thank you all so much for joining us, and uh, we'll see you this next week with Space News. Yeah, is that the close? That's the close. That kind of goes. That's what happens. <laughs> You're not wrong. That is what happens.